Welcome back. Mitzvah number 25. It is a positive commandment to rest from work on the first day of Passover. Let's look inside. It is a positive commandment to rest from work on the first day of Passover. By the way, this will be the case. There'll be a positive commandment for the last day of Passover and the first day of Rosh Hashanah and the first day of Sukkot, etc., etc. Okay, since scripture states on the first day you shall have a holy convocation, work is permitted However, to prepare sustaining food for Jews, although not for non-Jews. This is known as the heter, well, we'll get into it later. As scripture says, only that which every person must eat, that alone may be done by you. Whoever does work not needed for preparing sustaining food disobeys the positive commandment and transgresses the negative commandment to do no work. As scripture says, you shall do no manner of laboring work, book of Leviticus. See negative commandment 147. Burning a fire and carrying things out in public domain are permissible, even if not for the purpose of preparing food. You're allowed to carry and you're allowed to cook. By the law of the sages, every festival day is to be observed in lands outside Israel for two days. But in the land of Israel, only one day is observed. Rosh Hashanah, however, is observed for two days in the land of Israel. It is enforced everywhere at every time for both man and woman. Why is it enforced for both man and woman? Back up for a second here and get out of the sunlight. Thank you. It's enforced for both men and women. This is not a mitzvah saseh shazman grama. This is not the type of mitzvah we've spoken about previously where a particular time of day generates the responsibility. So obviously, women are responsible uh, or are obligated in this. Now, a couple of notes here. A couple of notes. This is known as the heter of... Um, this is the, uh, the heter to do work, the permission to do work, the heter called ochel nefesh. That we're allowed to do things for ochel nefesh, things that uh, things that are done for the purpose of preparing food. Now, by the way, that doesn't go to the nth degree. Doesn't mean you can go out and harvest wheat in your field and then grind it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But once you have the raw materials, you're allowed to put them together to cook them on yom tov. However, one should not be cooking from yom tov for on yom tov for non-Jews or for that matter for any other day than yom tov. Unless Yom Tov runs into Shabbos, in which case there's an Erev of Tavshilin, which allows you to cook from Yom Tov to Shabbos. It's another discussion for another day. Um, now, because the mitz, uh, because Ochel Nefesh, preparation of food, is permitted, there are two other notable permissions. One is Havara, burning a fire, which obviously you need to do in order to cook food. So if you're allowed to cook food, you're allowed to make fire. However, one should keep in mind that one should not be starting a fire, but rather continuing a fire. How does one continue a fire? So, for example, besides leaving the stove on, which you can do, right? But you remember back in the day, right, gas stoves, you used to light a match, right? So what was the play? You'd have a yard site lift, you'd light a match from the yard site lift, and then you'd light from the pilot light, you'd extend the fire from the pilot light up into the gas stove. This was wonderful until they caught up with the incredible lack of energy efficiency involved in having pilot lights burning all the time. Um, I don't know if there were safety issues as well, perhaps, but whatever the deal is, no more pilot lights. And since there's no more pilot lights, um, we have a little bit more of a problem with the stove and starting a stove on Yom Tov. But anyway, you're allowed to kindle a fire from an existing, pre-existing fire on Yom Tov. And by the way, that's for whether it's for cooking or not. So remembering the days when people would smoke a lot, like lots of people all the time, right? So how did you smoke on Yom Tov? Again, you had a yard site lift. My father had a yard site lift and he'd go with his cigarette and he'd light it off the yard site lift happily ever after. We used to be in the Granite Hotel for Pesach back in the day, now known as the Hudson Valley Resort. We used to go for Pesach, right? So there were lifts, there were yard site lifts laid out and all the, all the folks who were smoking would come over and light up off of that. You're allowed to light a fire from a previously existing fire for any cause um, on Yom Tov, as long as it's a pre-existing fire. You can't start the fire. The other permissibility is Havara, transporting from domain to domain. It is not necessary to have an Erev in order to carry on Yom Tov the way it is necessary to carry on Shabbos. Obviously, if it's Shabbos and Yom Tov, you can't carry without an Erev, but... Uh, I keep using the word carry, transport is more correct. You're allowed to transport items from domain to domain on Yom Tov. This is because the way the Yom Tov was celebrated was that you cooked something and then you went over to somebody else's house and you gave them a gift or you all had joint meals together. 
right? So uh, there's no point in permitting the preparation of food if you can't get the food from where it's prepared to where it's going to be consumed, which was not at all necessarily one's home. Okay, we will be back next time where we will discuss the mitzvah to count the Omer. That'll be our next mitzvah, mitzvah number 26. Thanks for being with us. Have a good day.